Hey friends, it's Barbara Sue at Kowalski Mountain. Welcome back to our channel. So today I am going to make something new that I've never made before and we're going to see how it works. Now, as you know, Philip is a beekeeper, and so we have an abundance of honey, although this year we've sold out of all of our honey, and I have a little bit of wild honey that I saved. Now, this honey came from a wild hive that Philip had to remove the honeycomb from a damaged tree, and we took all that honeycomb and crushed the comb to extract the honey and so we have a half gallon of beautiful dark wild honey now if you like raw honey you know that eventually your honey crystallizes and it's not really anything that we've done wrong it's a natural part of the process you can prevent crystallization by storing it properly but inevitably raw honey usually is going to crystallize at least some and i have some honey this is um last year's honey so this is 2021 honey that i was trying to use up and it has crystallized in the bottom now i actually like crystallized honey there's nothing wrong with it it's just thick and it's really nice on a biscuit frankly but today i'm going to try to make whipped honey might think like I did that whipped honey is kind of like whipped cream that with air it whips it and it kind of changes the consistency of it but that's not actually what whipped honey is whipped honey is crystallized honey that has very fine crystals and we can kind of help the process by using our mixer to crush up and break the crystals the fun part is going to be getting the honey out of the bear and we're going to do a little experiment and see if we can make whipped honey. Now don't worry, I'm not going to waste this honey. Now if your honey ever crystallizes, you can liquefy it again. What you do is you put some water on the stove and you bring it to almost boiling and then you shut the heat off. You don't want to keep the heat on. Then you just set your honey container in the warm water and the warm water will liquefy the honey. So no worries, I will not waste this precious honey. Um, it's just kind of hard to get out of this bear. Now we have right at a quarter of a cup of crystallized honey. And we're gonna add that to the kitchen. Now we're going to use the KitchenAid not to whip the honey. We don't want to incorporate air into the honey. All we want to do is kind of break up those crystals. In the meantime, Now as that whipped, the honey turned a really light color. 
And you can see that the crystals are much more fine than they were when we started. Now what we're going to do is, this is kind of like seed honey. So this crystallization will spread throughout the honey. So we're going to go ahead and add some of my non-crystallized honey to the seeded crystallized honey to help to help more grow. I've read a few different instructions. One instruction said you need to do 10 times the amount of honey as your seeded honey. And then I saw another website that said that seven times was better. So we're going to go with seven because I don't really need that much whipped honey, um, especially since it's an experiment and I don't want to waste my honey just in case it doesn't work. But so that was a quarter of a cup. So seven times that would be, I'm going to say that I need to add a little less than two cups. I'm going to do a cup and three quarters. I think that's going to be good. Now we're going to mix this up. We're going to mix that crystallized honey that we seeded by crushing it up with the mixer and we're going to mix it throughout the honey. Now you can see that this honey has changed color and consistency. Now we're going to put it in a jar. Now the next step that we're going to do with our whipped honey is we're going to put it in the refrigerator. Refrigeration actually helps honey to crystallize. And so if you don't want your honey crystallized, the number one thing you should not be doing is keeping your honey in the refrigerator. Now I just wrote an entire blog post on how to store your honey. So if you want to learn more about how to store your honey, be sure to look in the description box for the link. But for the purpose of our whipped honey, we do want it to crystallize. So we're going to put it in the fridge. Now I'm going to give that a couple of weeks to let crystallization take place. It takes time and some things we just can't rush. So we're going to come back in two weeks and we'll see how it's doing. Hey friends, it has been a couple of weeks since I made the whipped honey and now we're going to see how it turned out. Now I have two jars. I have my main jar. Um, that I filled to the top and made this my main experiment jar. Now when I first open this up, the first thing I see is there's a little bit of foam on the top. 
And the foam just comes from all of the air that did get whipped into the honey while I was making it. So even though I didn't have my mixer on a high mix, it still did incorporate some air into the mix. And that has risen to the top and made kind of a foam. It doesn't change it at all. I can just scrape it off if I don't like how it looks, but it's not going to affect the flavor. Now the second jar that I had had just a little left in it. And I'm not gonna lie, I went ahead and dipped into the little jar already because I was curious to how it tasted. Now what I found in that little experiment is that the honey is very firm in the refrigerated jar. Now you don't have to refrigerate your creamed honey. I put it into the refrigerator because I don't have a storage area that's cool enough to store the honey. It's supposed to be stored at 57 degrees and here in our home that is not anywhere near close to the temperature that we store things at. So I put it in the fridge as a cooler place to keep the creamed honey. Since the honey was not very spreadable, I decided to go ahead and take my little extra jar and put it out on the counter and see what would happen to it. Now I will admit that this has made a much better spreadable honey and I'm much happier with this. Now we're going to look at both and see how they look. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the creamed honey that I kept in the refrigerator. Now you can see that that foam is right on top and I'm just going to kind of scoop it up. Now it is still semi spreadable. And this has been out for a few minutes while I prepared my video. But the really nice thing about the whipped honey is that it stays where I put it. There's no honey dripping down my biscuit. It's not dripping all over my fingers. It stays right on the biscuit exactly where I put it. So I'm going to go ahead and give it a taste. Very good. I do think that you probably use more honey using the spreadable honey than you would if you drizzled it on your biscuit. I can feel the texture of the fine granules of the creamed honey. Let's go ahead and try the honey that I left sitting on the counter. Now this honey is very spreadable. And you can see that you could do a much thinner layer of the creamed honey on it. It is a much better way to use less of the creamed honey by keeping it a little bit, uh, not keeping it refrigerated because it's spread a lot thinner. But they both taste good. And I'm not worried about this going bad because um, honey can be stored at room temperature. Now I like crystallized honey, whether you make it into creamed or whipped honey. Um, and I use it regardless. This spreads so much nicer than if you were just to use the granulated crystals that are in your honey jar. So that is a real perk of going ahead and creaming the honey. Um, but it's a really good way to use our pure raw honey. It's not been changed in any way. This has not been pasteurized. So the benefits of using raw honey have not been altered, which is what I really like about this method. I hope you will give it a try. I have created an entire post on the blog all about creamed honey, and it does include instructions on how to make your own seed honey and also how to cream it. So be sure to check it out at kowalskimountain.com. 
Well friends, we thank you so much for watching today and we appreciate every single person who has helped our channel grow. We are almost at our goal of 1,000 subscribers. So if you haven't hit that button, hit that button and help us reach that goal. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.